So when we're dealing with exercise in kids, um, there's, there's two ways to look at it. One is the health benefits of exercise, and the other is what we call now the, the, this term called physical literacy or biomotor abilities. What that means is teaching children how to use their bodies and how to move effectively. These strategies, when you learn how to move effectively at a young age, they stick with you for life. It's just like if you've never learned how to swim as a child, as an adult, it's very difficult for you to learn how to swim. Skating is another example. If you've never skated as a child, it's difficult for you to learn how to do it as an adult. So the focus with children is to A, develop healthy lifestyle through exercise, but B, develop this physical literacy and this physical ability, their ability to understand and use their bodies in a variety of activities. So when you're talking about exercise for health, children should be very vigorously active, moderate to vigorously active, at least 60 minutes a day. That's the guideline. And what does that mean? It could be mean that could be spread, split into different chunks. It could be in one unit. But it's a good practice with your children, or if you're a child watching this, that you ask yourself at the end of each day, did I do my 60 minutes? Was I active for 60 minutes? Did I do something that made me breathe hard, break a little bit of a sweat? And if the answer is yes, that means that you're, you're, you're doing pretty good. Uh, you've got to think back 100 years, a couple hundred years ago or a thousand years ago, children were very active. They didn't have a lot of chance to be sedentary. And that's how our bodies are designed. They're designed to be active. But today, there's so many barriers to us being active. Uh, we're in school sitting a lot. We're playing video games a lot, TV a lot. Uh, weather may keep us indoors. Uh, fear of going outside due to being hit by a car or an abduction keeps us from going outside and playing uh, like we went back when I was a kid. We used to just go at any time. Anyway, so because that children now are sedentary, so you, you got to really try and force that activity on because the body's designed to do that. But when it comes to learning how to use our body, um, it's very important at the younger ages that you develop skills in moving in all kinds of different planes. Up and down, forward and back, side to side, rotationally, uh, body on the floor, body upside down. And when you look at activities, you think, think class thing like gymnastics. Gymnastics is a great opportunity to learn many different types of motor skills, running, jumping, turning, twisting, using the upper body for support, using the lower body for support. But all kinds of sports have their be benefits for learning physical literacy. Basketball, the hand-eye coordination, working with a ball. Soccer, working with a ball with your feet. Skateboarding, great balance skill. Manipulating things with your feet as well as your whole body balancing and turning and um, uh, doing jumps, that kind of thing. But what we're going to do today, we're going to talk about uh, and do a little demonstration on warm-up, exercise warm-up uh, specifically. And ways you can get, uh, fun ways that you can get kids, well, fun, it depends on who you talk to, ways in which you can get your kids uh, ready for their sports, say if they're going to go play a basketball, that kind of thing, which um, not just uh, gets them warmed up and ready for the sport, but actually can develop movement skill at the same time. Then after we go through warm-up, I'm going to just talk about certain classic movements that the, the, your, your children should be able to do and that will last for the lifetime, whether they're in a fitness environment or an athletic environment. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about jumping and jumping patterns, squatting and lifting type techniques, uh, sprinting type techniques, those kinds of things that will transfer and carry on through the lifespan. And these are the kind of activities that you can try at home. And then maybe we'll give you a few little quickie workout suggestions that you can do with kids at home as well. Very quick and easy, and you don't need any special equipment for it. So let's bring our kids in and see if we can't make this uh, a good time.